Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. Welcome back to another photography video with me, Charles Wallers. Welcome to Wallers Photography. And today we're gonna talk about hummingbirds. I spent the last five, maybe six days trying to get a clear, crisp picture of a hummingbird. It's not as easy as you might think. So let me share with you some of these pictures and what techniques I've learned over the years as to how to get a good image of a hummingbird. They're amazing little birds and they, they have personalities and it's really, really cool when you spend so much time learning and immersed in their environment trying, trying to take a picture like this. But if you've ever tried to take a picture, you might have had something like this. Flying away, blurry, just out of focus, things that just do not look good. To me, a good picture of an animal or anything, or a person, you want the eye to be in focus. You want to be able to look into that eye and have that connection. So that is the most important thing when I'm taking a picture of an animal or a person or anything is to have that, that connection. And with these birds, it's really, really hard to nail that focus. <laughs> the first thing you need to remember in, in order to capture these birds is to attract them, is to bring them to where you are. And the best way is just with food. Get a hummingbird feeder and mix one part sugar to four parts water. Uh, hot water works great. You blend it in, you mix it, and then the, the sugar dissolves. Then you can just hang it outside once it cools, and within minutes, you're gonna have hummingbirds. It's amazing how they find it. I don't like to use the food coloring because I've read many, many studies where it damages their kidneys because they're so small, and they can't process all the, the chemical coloring. So. It, it, I haven't had a need. They don't seem to care if it's red or blue or whatever color it is. As long as it's hanging out there, they'll be there in no time. So again, one part sugar to four parts water and you're good. They'll, they'll be there. The first technique that I've learned and that I use for these videos is patience. Observe, watch them. These birds are, have a program. <laughs> They'll come and feed, they'll fly away, 10 minutes later they'll come back. And they, they seem to like the same branches. They'll go and sit on the same twig over and over again. They feed from the same orifice on, on the hummingbird feeder. They just keep coming back. They have, they're, they're like a computer. They're programmed to repeat and repeat. So with a lot of patience, you would know where they're gonna be. And that's how you're able to focus and get a, a, get a clear, good image of them. It is difficult because I spent hours and hours, I can't even tell you how many hours I spent sitting there waiting, but patience is key. It is very difficult to get a good picture if you don't have the time. Uh, here where I am right now in the mountains in Oregon, these hummingbirds are very shy, so it is very difficult to get close. That's why I was using the 400 millimeter with the teleconverter. Some of these other images I took a 200 millimeter, a 70 millimeter, I'll show you this one right now, but these birds were not shy at all. They were just zooming and flying back and forth and they were right in front of you. They were not scared. But these guys here, they are. Which brings me to my next, uh, my next tip is blend in with the environment. All right, maybe not like that, but if you can blend in and just be still They'll, they'll get comfortable with you. They'll keep coming back. They'll show up and they'll let you get close enough to get a good image with good detail. But it's all about patience. Even Bambi got tired of waiting. So like I said, patience is key. 
I had this flower and I was just waiting and waiting and finally I got the shot that I wanted. All right, not that one, this one. <laughs> The three main ways to capture these hummingbirds is one, while they're perched, while they're on a branch. And for that, you don't need a, a fast shutter speed. Anything above 125th, just so you can hold still and their breathing is not gonna be blurred. But if you know where they're gonna land, you don't need a very fast shutter speed, which is amazing because then you can drop the ISO. Once you learn their patterns, you know where to point the camera. The next step is trying to get them midair when they're flying, and this is extremely difficult. Uh, in this case, I went and I bought uh, flowers. I bought some hanging flowers, and I was hoping to catch one in the flower. This helps because now I know I can focus on the flower and just wait for the hummingbird to come to the flower. Uh, it took me about three days, and then I finally caught this female on the flowers. And it was so much easier to focus on the flower and then get the bird. The third way, the third most popular way to capture these things is one technique I didn't use and that's because these guys are very shy. With a few speed lights and a fake background you would put a light on the background, one speed light aimed at the background and a couple of the speed lights on low power on your hummingbird and then you just place one flower so it's very easy to focus. You use a very high f-stop at 200 of a second and when the bird comes to the flower all you're capturing is a light. So you already have a light in the background and then two more lights on the bird. And it, it looks amazing. You freeze the motion of the wings, you freeze everything. But again, these guys were way too shy and I, and I could not get that to happen, so. For these pictures and video, I'm using the Canon EOS R5. Years ago, I took some pictures, some really good pictures with the Canon 7D. But today, for the purpose of this video, this was my main lens. So it's the 1 to 400 uh, EF lens, it's an L lens. And I used it with the teleconverter, so it's a 1.4 teleconverter. And the converter for the Canon RF mount, which is the, the R5. So that was, that was a, a lot in there. The problem with the 1.4 teleconverter is that it takes a lens that's a 5.6 and it turns it into an F8. So I lose a lot of light. If you don't get the, enough light, then F8 at a higher shutter speed, it's just almost impossible to get a clear image. You really have to bump your ISO, and I don't like to go above 2000, uh, 3200 if I really have to, but it's something that I don't like to do. But I think I'm rambling on too much. Let me show you here real quick some of the shots I got with this lens. And then there's this one. <laughs> this is a little bit different because this is the whole image. And let me show you here at 100%. You can see the eyeball. You can see pollen and everything on the beak of this little guy. That, that's at 100%. That's a full size image. And for this image, I used, no, not this lens. I used the macro lens, a 180 millimeter macro lens. It's another Canon L lens. It was adapted to the, the R5, but for this image, I said, I, I, I remembered that this camera has uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. So I used my phone as a trigger. I left the camera outside 
I covered it with a red towel to, to attract the birds and they wouldn't see it so they weren't scared. And by remote control, I took the pictures. I set all my settings, some settings I can adjust on, on my phone. But to capture this, there was no way they were gonna let me get that close. So I used my phone as a remote and I'm impressed. I also did the same thing with this lens. Now this is a probe lens. It's a completely manual lens. The focus, the aperture, everything else. So it's a, the widest aperture is an f14. That needs a lot of light. So the images are not perfect. They're a little bit grainy, but it's just a, an incredible perspective to be able to get that close and to see these birds from right their habitat. It just really, really cool. I also used the GoPro. I tied the GoPro to the tree <laughs> and again, remote control the GoPro from my phone. It's a really, really cool animal to just to learn about, to, to take pictures. And to me, they're beautiful. The colors, the shades, are, their behavior is amazing. See, this one is very grainy. This one I took with the probe lens and to expose this properly, I needed an ISO of 10,000. And that's a little bit much in the dark forest, but I think the image itself is, is pretty cool because of the perspective. You know, it's way too grainy to, to be clear, but the perspective is unique. And that's, that's what I like about some of these lenses. But it's all about practice. It's all about just going out there, practicing, snap some pictures, learn, be patient, and enjoy the results. And it's just something really cool to see. There's two males and two females that roam this area. And it, I captured, I think, only one of the males because the other one's much younger and he's very shy. So not, not only do I want to focus on the eye, but I wanted to be clear. I wanted to be able to zoom in and see the, the detail in this, on the feathers. So if you can see here, you can count the feathers. You can see the eyeball. You can see everything is nice and sharp and the lighting was perfect. You could just see this, the, the shadows and detail in, in this female here. For this video, I also use this. So that's my little Tascam recorder that I'm using right now. And I used this, I put it right next to the feeder and on the tree and it was there for about four hours. So I had to go through four hours of audio just to be able to come up with some of these soundtracks and some of the, the noises from these birds. And I spent a lot of time making this video and I really did enjoy it. I put a lot of effort into the sound, the different angles, different unique perspectives, using different lenses, different cameras, different techniques. And I think the results uh, speak for themselves. So if you do enjoy the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see you next time. Bye.